Just know that I'm filming this au naturel, okay? <laughs> just yesterday, after weeks of agony and crises and just revision, I finally finished my last exam. Woohoo! But do you know what that means now? It's time for reading. It's time for editing. It's time for me to live my absolute best life here in Cambridge without having anything I necessarily have to do. Discounting all the various travel arrangements I have to make for my extremely exciting trip abroad that I'm going on in just nine days now, I think. I'm going to go and teach in Bali. As I mentioned in my covid vlog video so go and check that out it's up here the fun news is that i'm going in literally nine days and yet i've decided to give myself a certain set of books that i want to read before i even go and another segment of books that i want to read while i'm there bearing in mind that i'm in this far off wonderful land of bali to teach but i am there for six weeks so I'm thinking if I don't at least finish one whole book on the plane there just just alone then i've kind of failed as a human being you know we're traveling for just wait, just wait, 27 hours. That includes layovers, but by God, will that be interesting? Like a fool, I didn't request to change the flight from the time that they, you know, initially suggested to us all. I should have done that because unfortunately that means that I will be staying up the whole night through for this thing called King's Affair. It's like a kind of an all night end of term party, otherwise called Mabel's at other colleges. But I will be staying up all night for that. <laughs> taking the inaugural photograph at 5am to sort of show the, the people who have survived and then I will be literally hopping in my mum's car being driven I'm in my mum's car sorry um, being driven to <laughs> London Heathrow and jetting off so it's going to be quite a whirlwind of a 48 hours effectively so Without further ado, I have a segment of books that I'm going to try and finish in the next nine days. Three of which, no, four of which I'm already reading. Now let's cover those. First and foremost, I'm reading Emma by Jane Austen. Now this is a very well-known classic by the very well-known author Jane Austen, who is, in my opinion, fabulous. The humour of Jane Austen is so sarcastic and so dry that you actually have to kind of have already locked onto the language to be able to read it. It's like a it's like a subtext which is very easy to miss if you're just fundamentally struggling to work out what's going on at, at the surface level already. It's absolutely brilliant once you are kind of familiar if you know what I mean and before then it can be very taxing. But Emma is the story of a rich young woman called Emma Woodward. Uh, Woodward? Woodside? Right, that's awkward. Woodhouse? <laughs> None of those two. Emma Woodhouse is a member of the sort of the gentry level. She has quite a lot of money, but not like masses and masses. Think Pride and Prejudice, that kind of Regency era, landed gentry kind of people who are very rich, but like that's not the absolute richest that aristocrats in that day could get to if you know what I mean. There aren't many other members of the right class in her town in the local area for her to be friends with so she amuses herself by matchmaking and this includes basically kind of taking this girl Harriet Smith under her wing someone who's definitely in a lower class than her but basically kind of like a duckling she just takes her in and says right I'm gonna make you gentle and wonderful and elegant and I'm gonna find you a husband and this is Emma's Emma's project if you will her little summer fling and obviously it all goes to shit. I'm about halfway through the book. It is just so fun following Emma because Emma is hilarious. She is a brilliant character because she is just fundamentally a real person, oblivious and naive and rude. I just, I love this book. Anyway, so I'm 230 pages through a 450-ish page book and that's probably gonna be a bit tricky to finish in the next week. Secondly, what else am I reading? The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. Now this is a very well-known contemporary fiction which was published in 2003 and it is the story of a boy growing up in Afghanistan whose father has a servant man and his son um, who live in the back garden and this servant's son, who is also a servant himself, Hassan, is both from a different ethnic group, a lower caste, and is one year younger than the main character, Amir. So Amir and Hassan grow up together and in a very direct way, classism and xenophobia and racism and all these issues are kind of intertwined in how they see each other. And it's, it's 
really interesting reading them growing up, but then there's a really very shocking scene where something terrible happens to Hassan and Amir doesn't want to deal with it, so he gets them sent away right before Afghanistan goes into war because first of all the Russians invade and then there's the rise of the Taliban and etc etc and then complexity of life in, in another country in the USA where there are just so many different cultural differences. The blurb says Amir realizes that one day he must return to find the one thing that his new world cannot grant him redemption. So this is a redemption story of someone who has made a fundamental, genuinely awful uh, decision against someone who was supposed to be his friend and he's spending his whole life feeling guilty for it. I'm enjoying but please please look up the content warnings if you're interested because the scene involving Hassan shocked me to my core. I was reading it right before bed and I, I didn't expect it and I think that it was the wrong time to be reading something like that so please be aware of what might be coming. What else am I reading before Bali? Last night at the Telegraph Club and I'm really only less than 100 pages through but I'm hoping to sit down and just absolutely slam through this because again it's a queer YA and it is oh it's just brilliant. I will have way more to say about this book in the episode of the Queer YA Romance Quest when it comes out. When it does I will link it above but it might be a bit after this video when it comes out. All I can say is sapphic 1950s Chinatown America vibes. <laughs> it's great. Anyway, the fourth book that I'm currently reading is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 2, um, also known as The Restaurant at the End of the Universe. Now, I don't have this physically with me because I'm reading it on my phone as an ebook from the library, so I can't present it to you, but I am enjoying it tremendously. I think I'm about a fifth of the way through, and it is just pure absurdity. Very soon after I finished the first Hitchhiker a couple of weeks ago, I started just wanting something just so light and silly and ridiculous and funny again. And I was like, right, I think it's time to get the next book. I'll put it on hold from the library. So I'm quite glad that this has been something I can read. Again, it's a very short book because there's about five or more of the books, but they are all basically barely 200 pages long. And like I say, just so funny and ridiculous and quite a lot of it is dialogue, meaning that you can just fly through. Ha ha. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a series of random exploits in space is how I would put it, including Marvin the Paranoid Android, who is by far my favourite character so far, Zafford Beeblebrox, the President of the Galaxy, pan-dimensional beings in the shape of mice, and a random human who keeps wanting to find some tea to drink. So really, it's just a wonderful time. Next book that I want to read, which I haven't started yet, is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. Now, if you've seen my reading vlog from the beginning of this term, I mentioned wanting to pick this up, but first of all, feeling a bit awkward about how much I like Sally Rooney. I've got over that now, don't worry. And also, second of all, just not wanting to like storm through it when there's no other Sally Rooney backlist for me to read. But this is borrowed from my friend Ava. She needs it back before she leaves for term. I need to not have a random hardback in my belongings, which I'm just towing around across the country it just wouldn't be a very good idea so similarly I think when I get stuck into this it won't take long to read and I'm just bloody looking forward to it basically <laughs> right what else um, another thing that I need to read before I go is Aristotle and Dante um, disco discover the secrets of the universe I think is the full title it is quite a sort of an early-ish queer YA romance for my series once again you can see that when it comes out and it is for the episode previous to the one with last night at the telegraph club in because i keep reading everything out of order i'm sorry it does make it difficult to keep track but i assure you i am and similarly you will see that when it comes out again i'll link it above but who knows when that'll be the next thing that i am hoping to read that this is very much the like the lowest on the priorities list is murder on the orient express by agatha christie why do i want to read this because I just had it on my shelf for ages really. It's been part of my Cambridge stack since Christmas and I just, it's really short. You'd think I'd get around to it, but just no. So it's one of those things where I'm like, I might as well just like get on with it, have a good time, be done with it. And then I can leave it at home. Part of this exercise is the fact that I just have way too many books here in Cambridge. And if I can read some, take them back home, be done with it, then there will be less for me to carry when next term comes around basically. Final thing that I am hoping to read before Bali, before I leave on the 23rd, I'm, I'm realising this sounds stupid as I say it, but 
The final thing is The Hungry Tide by Amitav Ghosh. This is going to be fulfilling my, um, my India book for my Around the World Challenge. If you haven't any idea what I'm talking about, go and check out my January Pages Challenge videos. Set in a kind of a very uh, marine area of India where there's kind of lagoons and bays and sort of islands dotted around and so a community that is built upon water essentially is, is navigating life. The point is that this balance of a community has been disturbed by some random people showing up for various reasons but I think I don't want to know any more about it than that aside from the fact that I've heard it is genuinely beautiful. I mean Amitav Ghosh, she, he's known, she? He? I don't know. They are known for a huge amount of books, different books like The Sea of Poppies. This is well known for a reason and I'm looking forward to it. So I borrowed this from the English Faculty Library. So if I don't read it before I'm flying off, then I'm just going to have to give it back and read it maybe next term when I come. That's fine. Right. So that covers everything that I'm going to try and read in the next nine days. Yes, I realised that was absolutely a fundamentally impossible TBR but we're gonna just we're gonna move on we're gonna accept anywho here is my Bali TBR for the six plus weeks I'm there I don't I don't remember the exact number of days but it's a hell of a long time I've seen the pictures of our accommodation it's gonna be literally ridiculous I'm gonna hopefully be spending a lot of time reading by the pool I don't know who knows maybe I'll end up being so busy from both teaching and just culturally exploring the island that I might not actually get around to as much as I expect but I, I want to be prepared for all eventualities I have so many books to read. I have a bunch that I've been kind of slowly making my way through for a particular video. I'm sure you'll see that coming out some point but probably not till several months from now because there's a hell of a lot of books. I really over I, I overdid it. I've now realised that the maximum amount of books I should be trying to read for one video is four or five at most. I chose like ten for this one so it's taken a bit of a long time. Those books are Digging to America and Tyler, which is about someone, two families in the USA who are adopting uh, kids from South Korea. Transnational adoption, as we know, is a ridiculously complex thing and has come under a lot of critique recently, as it should. So it'll be very interesting reading about that. The second one is The Flowering Thorn by Marjorie Sharp. This is quite an old one. I think it's from the 30s. Basically, it's about you know on AO3 there's that tag that's like accidental baby accidental baby acquirement or something like that. Um, it's essentially that. Some random kid turns up and this woman is like, right, they're mine now, I guess. So again, fun. Lucky Boy by Shanti Sekaran is about um, shared parenthood and the kind of complexities of caring for a child in difficult circumstances. And again, I know very little about it, except that it's gonna be fabulous. Careless by Kirsty Capes. Now this is actually one that I am desperate to read, desperate, because I, I heard about this like months ago um, coming out. It's about a girl who is teenage, in the UK and pregnant. She realizes she's pregnant and it's about the kind of implications of that. I think she is in Fostica herself and I, oh my gosh, I want to know. I want to know about these things. I am so deeply in, invested in the adoption and foster care issue as a whole. Just parenting in general, I think is a fabulous realm of inquiry that I find deeply interesting learning about. So specifically seeing how that plays out in the UK context, I think will be very eye-opening for me. So that will be great. The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary is one that's set in Scotland. So another kind of different location. I am gonna count this as a different around the world challenge book. I know that, that that might not be sort of official policy in terms of Scotland not technically being its own country. I think from my own experience, it would be remiss of me to treat Scotland and Wales and Ireland part of the UK. I've already had an Ireland book, but I mean Northern Ireland. So I think that at least for Scotland, we'll see if I can find a Welsh book, but at least for Scotland, I am going to read a separate book for that. Oh, what's this one about? I don't know. Wait, is it Scottish? Oh God, maybe it's French. That'd be really funny. Oh no, it is French. Right, crisis, um, my phone ran out of charge. Liberty, please take this as a reminder in the future to make sure your phone is actually charged before you use it for high intensity filming. But we live and learn. Anywho, the book that I unfortunately got cut off while talking about is Little Fires Everywhere by Celestine. So another one that I'm gonna be reading in Bali, um, this is very well known all over booktube. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's 
about two families in America somewhere, one of which is like white and upper middle class, the other is black and sort of poor and like working class, the mother is an artist I think, a struggling artist whole thing. It's basically about the two families like colliding. I'm, I'm not totally sure, even though I, I actually already watched the TV show but for some reason I really can't remember any of the major plot points except that I think that there is a daughter of the rich family who is queer and I remember really appreciating her in the TV show so I think that shows what's important to me. Now that is all the physical books that I will be taking with me to Bali but even though I don't have that much space in my suitcase I am taking a bit of a stack with me but the, I will also be taking a, another whole load in the form of ebooks. Um, I've got my Kindle and I'm going to be reading Aristotle and Dante before I go theoretically like I said but then I've also got Meet Cute Diary, Heartstopper, you should see me in a crown, queer YA books for various episodes of that whole thing to read on there. I have read a couple of those already but it's all about getting the fresh perspectives. Otherwise I also have, oh I have an ebook on my phone from the library which is Malibu Rising, Taylor Jenkins Reid, you know, the queen of booktube and her books are very addictive, they are, they are just fun to read. I haven't thought either of them so far have been, you know, great in terms of just book structure but they have been fun to read so I will see how this one compares I'll obviously deliver back to you what the whole premise is and how it compares to Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and all that when it comes to it otherwise I just have like a backlog of various things on my kindle that I haven't read yet because I have bought some things and my mum has bought some things we share the same kindle account which are kind of just laying about on my kindle ready for use and this is probably the opportunity when they will come in handy I will have the backup of a fair few on my kindle if it comes to it. Ramona Blue which is another queer YA but it's not a romance so it's not part of my challenge I just want to read it see how it fares it sounds really interesting but again I cannot put my finger on what the story is right now apologies but I think it centers around Ramona who is like a teenager in a family that is like living in a trailer park I think it's American and she is basically sort of navigating her identity in this like space that's very much set against her it looked very cool and the cover is beautiful other books I have from my mum are The Midnight Library by Matt Haig which I don't expect to like she hated it but I will read it and <laughs> give it a try I know I'm behind the trend on that one like severely behind the trend but I just I wasn't that into the idea and the only reason I'm really into it now is because it's literally already bought on my Kindle. Find out what the fuss is about. It sounds to me as if mental health has been treated a little bit badly in that book but we all have our, our opinions so I'll see how it goes. Otherwise there's also um, A Gentleman in Moscow on there, I think that's what it's called, by Amor Fowles question mark. Guy who lives in Moscow like throughout much of the 20th century and so it's basically just kind of seeing history from the perspective of a particular person which is always really interesting like the passage of time and how it relates to real life is really hard to quantify so that'll be cool if I get to it because the issue here folks is that I have a bunch of options and I might read all of them none of them I might read other ones that I just take with me for no apparent reason I might find books in Bali which I end up reading I might read none of it because you know I'll be really busy I don't know what's going to happen and as always I have over egged how many I need to take but as we've all learned from car journeys as a child if you don't take a spare book you will end up needing a spare book. I'm gonna be safe and sound with my extremely large book collection and have a fabulous time both pre and post flying across the world. And then I'll be going to teach English, get a certification and experience a tropical island for six weeks. I, like, I'm just so grateful for, for what's happening to me at the moment and I'm so excited to read all these books. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. I hope that that gives you some interest. TBRs is usually not the thing I would gravitate towards um, making for myself because I am very much a mood reader and it's not like I can foresee when I'm going to have the time or the inclination to read things. So the only reason I'm doing it now is because I already had to draw up a list for myself of what books to take because I physically can't have my whole collection with me, you know? So it's it was about being pragmatic and so since I already had a list going on I was like, aha! content. Let me know if you've liked this. Let me know books set in Bali. 
I haven't like seen any or heard any except for Eat Pray Love but please don't recommend me Eat Pray Love okay I don't want the like orientalist white savior bent I don't want that so anything but that that's set in Bali or Indonesia in general would be really fun and otherwise thank you very much for joining me my name is Liberty this is my channel feel free to subscribe or comment or like or anything you want see you again later have a good day goodbye